Welcome to another segment of Women Lead TV brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Michelle Berquist, your host of Badass Business Women. That is so much fun to say. Let's say it together. Badass, badass business, business Women. women. Ooh, that was good. <laughs> With me today is our leading lady and badass business woman is Christine Cunliffe, and she is one of the partners in Bobo Strategy, which, by the way, is a badass business name, but I'm like, what does Bobo Strategy mean, and how did you come up with that name? So in reality, it is based off of a stuffed monkey that no uh, my husband and I have named Bobo. But what we also found was Bobo had a number of different meanings. So um, in some cultures, Bobo means stupid. Ooh. And in some cultures, it means rich. So uh, we have some ideas sometimes people think are stupid, but sometimes the ideas we provide our clients help make them rich. I love that. So stupid and rich. Those are on. Those are really. And Bobo is so fun to say. Do you get yes. a lot of people that ask you? It's like, what's Bobo strategy? Yes, it's a great way to um, introduce ourselves and our yeah. business. But what we also find is when people say it, they smile. Oh, totally. And like so, your smile. Which yes. I told you, you have a great smile. She has a great. She has a great smile. Let's talk a little bit about what Bobo strategy does because when I have talked to you, you have a plethora of services. And then there's a niche that you have. So share a little bit about your overall services at Bobo Strategy. So we at Bobo Strategy like to consider ourselves management consultants for small businesses. Like so between myself and my business partner, we have a wide variety of expertise. So for instance, my specialty is HR technology and my partner's is uh, more on the financial technology. And so we're able to serve people mm. Um, with their variety of operations from marketing, HR, finance, and um, IT. And out of full disclosure, can we say who your partner is? Yes, it's also uh, my life partner, Chris. Yes. And, and I love it because it's like you guys not only life and then you've got the business side. And I imagine there's some things there. That's called a family business. Yes. Because <laughs> yes. we don't all, it's like I worked with my husband in my business years ago and it was lots of stories there. But I think the question I've got, because you've got an incredible story of you with your confidence and your Sue Talk, which you are a past Sue Talks presenter, it's like, just briefly share the story for you in corporate America and how you decided to go out and do your own thing, because that is a priceless story for a lot of women to hear. Well, um, I had been in consulting, traditional consulting, like the road warrior type for about 10 years. And in 2015, um, Chris and I decided to move to California, and I loved it so much. I wanted to stay here as much as possible. But from where? Where were we from? From Chicago. Chicago. Yes. Wrestling Chicago. Wow. So I, I wanted to stay here more because it's nice having 60 degree, degree weather in the winter. Um, but my job wasn't allowing for that, mm -hmm. and there were a lot of conversations that I was experiencing with respect to the level of work um, that I wanted to do and what was available for me. And um, things were just happening and it finally came to a point where we were both in a position that I could leave and join the family business. So uh, January 1st of 2016, I did that. And did you move here after that, or you were already here? We by were then? already here for okay. almost a year. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And California doesn't suck. Just so everybody no, needs to know that, right? No, it doesn't, and it is a great place to do business. Okay, let's hear that again. <laughs> I like that because the media gets that wrong. Yes, it's not bad. We we got it going on, and I'm you know. I think this is what's interesting for small businesses, Christine, is that people get so up in, at least women do, in the idea to be perfectionists in what they do. So I'm curious some of the things that you see, especially with women-owned businesses, that maybe you could give some advice to of what you and, and Chris see in Bobo strategy, of what the struggles are, and it's like, stop that. I mean, what should they stop doing? I would completely agree with the whole idea of not needing to be perfect. Mm -hmm. I would say I'm not, and I'm not going to strive to be. I think and stop apologizing, right? Yes. There's that book out there. We, we stop apologizing. Yes. <laughs> and I, I would say that um, a lot of people, and in particular women, tend to forget about what are some of the benefits of going into business and at the core um, why they decide to go into business. Mm -hmm. So for instance, with me, like one of the things I love about being a business owner is I make my own schedule, I wear what I want, and I work with who I want. Yeah. And I think that women tend to focus on wanting to please because that's kind of how we're groomed. And in the corporate world, there's 
um, very much still that notion. Right. And I think that if you're able to just be yourself, be authentic, show how you as a person can add value, um, and you do that by being um, or embracing what the benefits of being a business owner are, that that's how you grow a sustainable and successful business. I love that. You know, and there's so many women I know, even in our association of, of CWI, Connected Women of Influence, and they will, they, they're thinking of leaving their corporate careers and they want to start a side hustle or, you know, a, a business. And yet, this is what I hear from a lot of women and I want to hear your two cents on it, is, well, I need to figure out how I'm going to make as much as my corporate career. And I'm like, that ain't going to happen, in my opinion. I mean, you have to learn how to transition out. Your lifestyle in a corporate career is much different in how you spend in your lifestyle in running a business. But give us your thoughts on that, because that is like such a myth. Maybe down the road, but I want to hear your thoughts. Yes, I think, well, first of all, it does take time. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that it, when a person is in that phase, they really need to be able to embrace the other uh, benefits of owning a business. So you know, like for me, it's the schedule, it's working and doing what I want and being able to be myself. And I will tell you that there is no money in the world that will make me give that up. Yes. Um, and so if you're able to embrace that, it allows you to be yourself. And when you're yourself, that's how you make the sales, you make the relationships, mm -hmm. you really show how you add value to other companies or other people. And then quite honestly, that's where the money starts rolling in. Absolutely, and you know, it's so hard because like you leave corporate America and you think, well, to, to my worth is gonna be evaluated based on what I make. And yet, you know, the learning lesson for me 30 years almost later was knowing that it's like, I'm unemployable, I'm okay with yep. it, right? I, I am totally <laughs> unemployable and I'll own that. And then number two, I've worked harder than I've ever worked in my entire life. But the third one is, it's like, I'm not working for somebody else anymore, but I'm not equating what my salary was in corporate America to what my opportunity is now. Would you agree with that? Yes, absolutely. And, and how, for somebody that is in corporate America, that they want to start a business, what would be maybe two or three things that you would advise them of what to really make sure you lock down before you start a small business? So. Our story is that we started our company with $15 of capital and we've grown it to what it is today, so a seven-figure revenue generating company. And wow. we've taken on zero debt to do it. And so that is possible. And I'll tell you what we did. Um, first off, before I left my job in corporate America, we paid off anything and everything we owed. And, um, and that really allowed us to, so I could take whatever salary I wanted and essentially we would be okay. Um, the Good second tip. thing I would say is get the notion of perfection and um, out of your head. I would say focus on value over vanity. So what mm -hmm. I mean by that is don't worry about the appearance or too much on the branding. Focus on adding the value to one person and you're gonna learn a lot from that. And when you're able to do that, your work is gonna be able to speak for itself. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to have your work speak for itself, it makes you so much stronger. Absolutely, because that is the brand, right? Yep. I mean, you are the brand as well. You know, talk a little bit about what the business owners you work with and this whole idea. I mean, I love this phrase and I'm curious because you, you offer a lot of services to business, but the, the riches and niches. You know, so many businesses try to be everything to everyone and yet not everyone can be your customer. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious, how do you, what would be some advice you would give to businesses that they are trying to do maybe too many services or be everything to everyone? Because I really niche down and go, if you don't know who you're well suited for, as well as who you're not well suited for, then you're not really driving a successful business. Thoughts? Absolutely, yes. And I've had experiences with this in multiple situations <laughs> where I've had to create things. And it goes, it, it still ties back to knowing who you are and being able to be yourself and embracing that part of business ownership. Um, yes, when you start a business, you are going to have to cast a wider net and you're going to have some good things happen. You're going to have some bad things happen. Right. But as you continue to try to add value to others, you're going to see what those things are and those niches are that you like serving. So um, ex for example, with us at Bobo Strategy, 
we find we work really well with the person whose name is on the door, who's signing the checks. That's and, always good advice. <laughs> and, it, and we find that it's it's often smaller businesses because mm -hmm. they value our our bandwidth with respect to what we know, but yet they also like the fact that we're nimble and adaptable. So that mm -hmm. is who we try to target. Mm -hmm. I like that because you know, and you you your services you flex if I'm understanding. Yes. So what a business needs is where you focus in on. And you're not like a one linear service. Exactly. How, you know, as you've grown your business, what, what do you feel are really the key things that you kind of focus on to get you to that seven figure plus business? Like you've been in business now a while. It's like, what are the kind of central things to your success? If you could share with our wonderful audience. So there is a quote I'm going to steal from Dave Ramsey. Love Dave <laughs> Ramsey. Let's and, go with that. Yeah. So it's um, financial freedom. And it's one of his core values, actually, at his company. But I, I wholeheartedly believe it when I first heard it. It's called it's excellence in the ordinary. Ooh. And so what that means is a lot of people think they got to think big and broad in order to be successful and get or achieve the goal they want. But really, it's it's looking at the everyday things and just being very good at that. Ooh, and the I like people that, that I we've worked with, whether um, at their them being our clients or us being the clients, we notice things like they're very responsive. They respect our time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they follow through with what they say they're going to do. And it's honestly, it's those little things that will make you stand out. And I would say that so. What are we now? Nine years we've been Crazy. in business. Almost since, 10. Wow. Yeah. Uh, last That's a big week. benchmark. 10 years, right? We're going to get there. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, 10 more. It's, 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 it really is the little things. It's do we, are we good listeners? Do mm -hmm. we hear what our clients say they need? Are mm -hmm. we solving the problem? And for, that really is what I think has brought us to where we are today. Good grief, girl. Excellence in the ordinary. I'm going to remember that because I, I crafted it. And it was by Dave Ramsey. I love it. Final thing, and I, I asked this power question to anybody that sits in on, my, on our show, and that is, what would be one or two things that you would share with other women and how they can be more badass in business? Just say no. <laughs> uh, but, then, but then just say yes. I'm like, yes, yes. just say no. Okay. But it is, it is okay to say no, and I think we tend to forget that. Um, so... You know, when it's something that you just don't think is a good fit in any aspect of your life, it is okay to say no and focus on finding that yes. Oh, I like that. Focus on no, but finding that yes. <laughs> I love what my husband has told me is he says, just say no, thank you. I'm like, oh, there that's you go. so much nicer. Yes. I'm like, don't say no. But <laughs> You've been an awesome, badass businesswoman. To our audience, thank you for listening in. We will be back here again for another Women Lead TV segment. And for today, go be badass.